Good evening, everyone, to all the wayshowers and galactic shamans, as I like to call them, and light workers, light raisers, frequency holders, wisdom keepers, light keepers, to the star seeds. Welcome. So tonight, I want to demystify spirituality. I want to simplify it for you and break it down in a way that's very understandable and relatable. Because we hear people talk about the light and the dark. We've heard it for eons, the angels and the demons. But what does that mean exactly? All right, so when we awaken, our body opens up. So we open up the floodgates of the light of those higher dimensions that hold higher frequencies. That light is going to disassemble Everything that was held in your structure that composed your structure within a third dimensional reality is going to disassemble and dismantle everything you once thought you knew about reality. So the light, we're just going to call it 5D for now. And the darkness is 3D. Is it like a, a red demon with horns? No. From one perspective, it is because it is the model, or I would say it's the representation of everything that is ego-driven or everything that is selfish. And I don't mean selfish in a service to your higher self kind of way, because we have to get selfish for a while in order to really remember who we are and unify from within again and come into unison with the higher self. So I'm not talking about that kind of selfish. I'm talking about 3D which is the darkness, is all of the limiting, confining belief systems that made up reality. So think of the darkness as a web of consciousness, like a big spider web of consciousness or a grid. And within it, you have information flowing through and circulating through but that all associates to limiting belief systems. Now, are they bad? No, they're not bad. They're just based off of what our ancestors experienced. So I'll give you an example. Say that you had a grandma or a great grandma that was struggling to make ends meet. And all she was concerned with was making sure that there's enough bread on the table. They were born in a different era. They were, they were incarnated in a different pool of consciousness. So, just like we have felt ourselves drag our feet through the mud, it's almost like you're lugging energy around, we have it a lot easier than what our ancestors had. And we were those ancestors as well, all right? From one perspective. So, the your great-grandma was... Her main focus was survival. I need to get bread on the table for everyone. That survival mode instilled within all of them all these different imprints or all these different beliefs. I believe I have to work really hard because they did at the time. They were born in a different time frame. So everything that's ever been existed, sorry, everything that's ever been experienced imbues itself into the ground. You can say that it imbues itself into the grid. Now Gaia has two grids. We're just going to say that for now. She has a lot more grids. She's multidimensional. But I'm going to simplify this right now. Gaia has a carbon-based grid, which is the 3D that you hear people talk about a lot. And then you have the 5D which is a higher aspect. You can think of it as the higher self of Gaia that she has now become. This 5D is crystalline. The 3D is carbon. Both of these dimensions are existing now at different levels of consciousness. That's all a dimension is. A dimensional reality is a level at which someone vibrates. It's a frequency range. Okay, so the 3D is what can I take? What can I get? Oh my God, I have to survive. Oh my God, I'm living in fear. I'm fear-ridden. I have all these things that I need to achieve. 
a lot of people still operate from that place because they're picking up on all the energies that is circulating amongst the 3D grid that is matching to their vibrational frequency. So let's say that you're angry. Haven't you ever noticed that there are crazy drivers around you? Why? Because you're vibrating at a certain bandwidth that is then magnetizing to you the, the mirror reflection of what you're experiencing in that moment. And then notice that when you take a deep breath, you open up your heart again, everyone's nice to you on the road. Hi, how are you? That's because you're in a different dimension within Earth. Planet Earth has gone quantum. And we get to select which Earth we want to reside upon. So... We don't want to fault ourselves for living in fear. We don't want to fault ourselves for guilt and blame and the finger pointing and all of that stuff. But the idea is to recognize and identify all these different emotions or energies as belonging to an older construct of reality. So let's say that at one given point, there were cavemen and they were... Their only thing, it was, they were primitive, they were primitivos, and their only priority was to feed themselves. And then at night they had to, you know, be in that, be on alert because there might be a bear that comes for them. I'm just giving you an example. Well, that energy was etched into the grid. And it's through that that we kind of evolve because then the next person comes along and they add to that, and they add to that, and then they add to that, and they add to that. So all of the fears that your parents have, from one perspective, you can say that they're their fears because they've made an agreement with that fear. They've made an agreement with the energy that was floating about that grid because they were vibrating at that level. But is it safe to say that that's not who they are? Yes. We have to hold ourselves accountable, though for everything that we invite into our reality. So from one viewpoint, you can say it is theirs because they've shaken hands with it. And from a different perspective, you could say that that energy was there before they were even born. It was imbued within the grid, the third dimensional grid, which is a spider web of consciousness. And every time they feed into the fear, they keep that system alive because they're energizing that system. But who they really are from the higher self container is that they are divine beings of love and light that don't buy into those limiting belief systems, limiting BS. They don't buy into that. And they would know that through going the opposite direction, of what that fear is influencing them into doing, they would be able to reverse all of the impurities, not only within themselves, but reverse the impurities within the grid. Meaning at one given time, it wasn't an impurity because planet Earth was in the midst of evolving. She was a young planet. She was quarantined. I see the planet as a being, just like me. And I have guides, or I've had guides. And those guides are like, ooh, Phil has a lot to learn, so we're just going to put him there in the corner, because otherwise it's going to be like a skunk, and it's going, to <laughs> it's going to reek for us. It's going to affect us. So planet Earth was quarantined so that she can go through her evolutionary process uh, uh, discreetly, if you will, and then as soon as she awakened, just like you awakened, she started linking herself into all these other star systems that are her guides. Arcturus, Pleiades, Sirius, all of that. They're all her guides. And she became one with them and she is one with them. And that's why we're experiencing a collective ascension right now. So to make it really simple... I've never read the Bible, but angels and demons, what does that mean? Angels are higher dimensional frequencies that target the demons, meaning that they travel like snakes in your physical structure, in the tunnels of your body, to then 
expulse those energies. They're going to they're going to get rid of anything that is still carbon based to allow for your body to send itself into that crystalline structure. So darkness isn't bad because without that contrast, we wouldn't be able to awaken because in many ways, that contrast was the catalyst for our ascension. Think of all the times that someone screwed you over or hurt you and then you played the victim and you're pointing the finger and you're delegating a blame game and then you realize, oh my God, I'm perpetuating this vicious cycle and I'm feeding into that old grid and thanks to this contrast, I can now rectify my behavior to reverse that impurity within myself so that I can enable myself into vibrating into a higher state of consciousness. So when you attract a narcissist, is that narcissist a teacher? Yes. From a different viewpoint, they're not the teacher at all. Your higher self is the teacher and your higher self steps in to show you what's going on so that you can correct your behavior, stop disempowering yourself and move away from narcissism as a whole. So there are, the nine are always teaching me that there are infinite ways and when I talk, you guys are going to hear me talk about the white-winged collective consciousness of nine, a group of Arcturian beings that I work with, angels to me. They're angels to me. But they're an aspect of myself. They're an aspect, they're a higher aspect that I, they are me. But if I'm not in a meditative space, sometimes I can receive downloads because I may not be vibrating at that frequency bandwidth. So they're a group of ETs. They're in my DNA. They are my DNA. Um, from a different perspective, they have their own life. So when you connect to a unicorn, and that, that energy of the unicorn gives you downloads, and you receive all these bundles of information, is the, can you see the unicorn? Perhaps with your third eye, so you're actually astral traveling where unicorns exist and unicorns do exist from that perspective they have their own realm just like humans have we have our own realm so anyways what the nine are always teaching me is there are a myriad ways to look at things so the narcissist is your teacher because you keep gravitating to something unhealthy which is then showing you something about yourself that you need to look at and address and resolve and dissolve from a different perspective the narcissist is the narcissist it's like the color is red and what are you going to do with that how are you going to respond to that are you going to up level are you going to start opening up your eyes sometimes we give people too much credit oh the narcissist was my teacher which is true and that's valid but your higher self was always there guiding you and you finally opened up your heart and got real with yourself. And then they also show me different perspectives. Like if you attract a narcissist, um, the, the entire timeline could have happened differently had you been in your power from the onset. Because every person that comes into your life, every world that collides with yours, our job, our duty, our mission, our role is to step forward into that in as the empowered individual, as that aspect of the higher self. So that very first time that narcissist tried to control you, had you said, nope, that's not acceptable, you now step up as the teacher and they can rearrange their Akash. They can rectify themselves. Every person you come into contact with is there to be a teacher or you're there to be their teacher. And ideally, it's an equal exchange. But remember, a narcissist can't be a narcissist unless you accept that, but they are a narcissist from a different perspective. We don't want to exclude any perspectives. Let's have this laundry basket and throw as many perspectives as we can. That's inclusion. That's unity. That's lending validity to every perspective because in an infinite universe then all things are possible. So, back to the grids. So you have this third dimensional grid and it is comprised of every imprint, everything that's ever happened that was a match to that consciousness. Everything. 
So when you feel guilty, your antenna dials itself into that radio station of every thought that's ever been experienced by someone who felt guilt. And it, it goes beyond that. It can be someone who, who is associated to someone who feels guilty. Like there's no end to this thing. And then if you feel like shaming yourself, you receive this zip file of all of the stories that happened around shaming. So once we awaken, we have this ability to be in the observer. That would be more of a higher self, fifth dimensional framework, okay? And within this framework, you can observe everything that's going on in the 3D without identifying through it and as it. And by mere observance, that energy starts to shift itself. It starts to shift itself. In my last video, I talked about how cigarettes, and I wasn't referring to tobacco, but cigarettes, Marlboro, all that, many people can agree that they're phasing out. They're petering out. But guess what? Because more awareness was brought to it, they took on a different form. People are vaping now. It's a lot healthier. Some might debate with that, and that's fine. That's not the point of this. Let's not get too literal, okay, and take things out of context. It's just to share a metaphor. Everything evolves itself. So let's say that you bump into someone who's who's like the weather's so awful outside and you look at them and you know they've done this before. So that's a third dimensional mentality that perpetuates the reality of victimhood. The weather sucks outside. Cool. Why don't you be that different person from the get-go, out the gate, who says, I'm sorry you feel that way. Huh? What are they going to do with that? They don't know how to... They're used to people... Who are like, yeah, I know, the weather's horrible, I don't know when it's going to get better, but that scenario's been played out a million times. It's like a song that's on repeat, okay? So you step in as their teacher in that moment, and you say, I'm sorry you feel that way. They don't know, they're, a lot, they're at a loss for words, they don't know what to do with that. But they go home, and they stew over it, and they go, oh, that, that was different. And that in itself is an activation. You activated them. I'm not saying go out and activate everyone and play Holy Ghost Junior. That's what I call it. Don't be Holy Ghost Junior. That's not what I'm suggesting at all. I'm saying show up as the empowered version of who you are. So angels, higher dimensional frequencies that are guiding you to your best self, that are helping you get on that ascension bandwagon on that higher traje trajectory towards your stargate ascension angels demons older energies that are rooted in fear shame blame guilt all of that stuff now just like i mentioned earlier with the unicorns do demons can demons exist can they be those red beings with horns yes because Consciousness is constantly building on itself. So if someone's ever entertained a demon, then that's been created. But maybe it was created before and they just picked up on it intuitively. So in hell, quote unquote hell, in the 3D, everything that is lower vibrational exists. Lower reptilian consciousness, archons, all of that stuff that wants to keep you in separation in a hierarchical structure, in a pyramidical structure, because you're easier to target that way, and then you can doubt yourself, and then you can blame yourself, and isolate yourself. <clears throat> and it's easier to harvest your energy if they keep you under someone. Oh my God, I wish I could be them. That's all hierarchical. We're all the same. We're all equal. But it's easier for those energies to siphon your energy. It's easier for those energies to siphon your energy. For those entities to take your energy if they create a hierarchy. That person's better than me. Oh, woe is me. I'm jealous of that person. And all those emotions that you generate that already exist are going to 
sorry, my, my, my screen just went off. Okay, all those energies are going to deflate. You're going to deflate your energy system. And where do you think that energy is being directed? It's going somewhere. It's like, rah, rah, rah. it's food for that lower vibrational structure. And I'm just calling it lower without, um, without degrading it because it is a teacher. Meaning that what if this entire 3D matrix was set in place as like a map so that we would retrace our steps back to the truth, to the divine organic template of the crystalline self? Without that mirror, how would we be able to become conscious? We descended upon this, this game of separation. And I always get this vision that like we tucked away everything we knew in our DNA. So imagine that your DNA has these different um, kangaroo pouches. And you're like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shove that here and I'm going to tuck that away here. And then... When I get to the planet, I already know, I've already signed up to forget. So there's going to be a veil of amnesia. I'm going to forget where I came from. But once I start owning up to what I'm creating, once I awaken, I'll be able to pull all those rabbits out of the hat and go, whoa, 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 whoa. And you start to remember, I'm from Sirius. Oh, wow. Okay, I've had a lifetime in Arcturus. Blah, blah, blah. Not that that's important, but it's fun to play with. So... The 3D grid is the demonic grid, but it's not really demonic. It's just unconscious. It's unconsciousness. It's when you're, you hear your parents say, oh, I don't know if I can spend that on this trip. That's fear driven. And I get it. We have to, we have to compassionize and empathize with people because if they're not aware that they're programmed, and that those programs are deeply embedded and they haven't broke them yet or they haven't broke them down yet, then yes, they're going to entertain the fear and they're going to believe those thoughts, not realizing that they're supposed to pivot away from those or look at them dead in the face and say, I, I refuse to believe that this is true. I, I refuse to believe that my universe wouldn't want me to be abundant. And then can you take steps towards your freedom? Can you invest in your soul? Can you hire people to help you? Your soul has to mean everything to you. I know for me, when I first started awakening, I had no money. And I'd go to Trader Joe's and I'd see this really beautiful green cold pressed juice. And I was like, I don't know if I can afford $5. But my guys were like, you need to buy it. How can taking care of your health be wrong? <laughs> like, come on. And it's true. It doesn't add up that buying a green juice would, wouldn't help me. I mean, and I had to break out of that. And it's like one little lily pad shows up and you step on it like a frog and then another lily pad and you step on it like a frog and then another lily pad. And before you know it, you're vibrating out of fifth dimensional consciousness. You're living on you earth. So when people talk about 3D and 5D, 3D is a web of consciousness. It includes all of the limiting beliefs, the unconscious programming that keeps humans anchored in the illusion of separation. But we can't blame it, just like you can't point fingers at the government. You can you can do that. That's okay. But then <laughs> Uh, awakening, if you keep talking about that, you're going to keep feeding into that system, which only gives it food. So you have to gather your wits. You have to amass the tools and get it going. And really work on yourself to ascend your consciousness, but also to ascend your body, your physical structure. The 5D is about unity consciousness. It's abundance. It's consideration, support, love, respect. But it's a higher form of love. It's not always going to please your friends. So as you break out of the 3D and you start to shift yourself into more of a 4 and then 5D mindset, a lot of people are going to have adverse reactions to you saying no. 
which is normal because they've been used to a certain way of you showing up in their life, which was your own lack. 3D is lack. That was your own lack, feeling obligated to go hang out with someone when you didn't want to do it. So it's like digging a hole for yourself and then you find yourself at the bottom of a dark abyss and then it's a little more challenging to climb out of it. But it's not that challenging if you choose yourself, if you prioritize your soul and your spirit and you say, enough. That's it. I have all this availability, all this technical support from higher dimensional beings, from everyone who's already incarnate and already residing upon 5D New Earth that have already uploaded that information for me to be able to download into my system. I don't need this to be a long, drawn-out process. It will be to a degree just because your physical body has to go through, it kind of has to climb the ladder, even though there is no ladder. It kind of does. Um, so, so it's a new form of love. It's a pure form of love. It's a high heart resonant energy of, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to. And then you're going to see the mirror reflection of all the aspects that you used to play in, all the aspects and the energies that you were holding in your third dimensional body show up. So when you say no to someone, they're going to get mad. They're going to get reactionary. That was you. They're an aspect of the you that you were that you once were. So don't get mad at them. Just own up to it. Okay, cool. I created a monster in the past, but I don't need to define myself as that monster anymore. I'm not, I don't have to, um, I'm who I am in this now moment. I'm not indebted to my past. Is this resonating, you guys? So they're grids and they're existing now. You can be driving beside a cop, a police officer, Are they beside you? Yes, they're right beside you. Are they seeing through a different lens? Absolutely. They're occupying a different dimension. They're looking for the bad guys. They're fulfilling a mission, a role. And you're in your car thinking about going to for a hike in nature. You're on a different dimension within Earth. It's a different level of consciousness. It's not better or worse. And that's not to say that there may not be corrupt cops who are operating within 3D, who want to pump fear in you. That's all 3D stuff. But then if you succumb to that and you allow their energy to throw you off balance and you're like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, yeah, I'm going to play nice. That's 3D too. You got to stand firm in your angelic archangel energy. I've done this millions of times since 2011. I had to be willing to get arrested or pulled over for standing in my truth. These are things you have to do because you're breaking old programming within yourself. But it also plants a seed for everyone who's been corrupt. So that was just to, 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 to make a point. But anyways... How far are you willing to go for your soul? That's the question. If you're willing to surrender your ego, that want, that's very crafty, that wants to manipulate everything, that wants to generate a particular outcome, like I don't want the cops to pull me over so I'm going to be extra nice and I'm going to dim my light down, then you're going to remain where you are because you have to take your body with you on the dimension that you want to reside upon. That is here right now. You have to take your physical body system with you. And that's going to distinguish someone who is only elevating consciousness-wise from someone who is taking their body with them. All right? So 3D, fear, lack uh, give me a discount. Oh, oh, I bought this the other day. How are... No, wait, I got it. How are you? Oh, I love your hair. I bought this the other day and I was wondering if I can return it. If you want a refund, just ask for a refund. That's 3D right there. That's manipulation. 
I had to go through all of this. <laughs> I still go through a lot of things. We're human. We're all in this together. And then the 5D is like abundance. It's like unity. I can listen to someone like a channeler and I will go donate just because they gave me a one hour experience. That's consciousness. You're supporting people through this network of light because we're anchoring a new way of existing. But that way of existing can't really anchor for you. It's already anchored for a lot of people. But I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to it won't anchor for the third dimensional earth dweller, for the third dimensional muggle. And I don't mean that in a judgmental way. I'm just being funny. It won't anchor for them as long as they're still participating in that lack-based reality. There has to be an equal measure exchange in all things you do. If you listen to someone and you got something from it, donate. And I'm not saying that so you donate to me, okay? That's whatever thought I just heard. That's just 3D stuff. I do it all the time. If someone helps me just for five minutes with my car or three minutes with, some, with a question I had, I give them a tip. That's just how we operate. That energy starts to spread. They go home, oh my God, you won't believe this person tipped me $10 today, was so kind. Wow, and it, it gives them the idea to start doing that. Or it opens up their heart, and then it's like it dominoes. That's 5D. There's no lack. Okay. So, um, quick recap. 5D, unity consciousness higher form of love that may not be agreeable to a lot of the people around you because you're finally taking care of your needs and you're not feeling that sense of obligation or that you should behave or that people should do this for you. It's a different way of being. That's 5D, a higher form of love that may not always be comprehensible to the people around you because they are representative of who you once were. It doesn't mean you let them go. You own who you are, this new version of who you are, right? Unfalteringly so. You have to stand in it, be steadfast in it, and people will fall away. That's just a natural process. People will, will fall away. Not everyone is meant to be in your life permanently. But as a gatekeeper, as a guardian of new earth, you have a different responsibility. It's entirely different. Where if someone disrespects you, they're not, it's not that you are like, you're not coming in. Yes, from one perspective, they're not welcome in your reality. But 5D is open to everyone. Everyone. It's just that we close our access to it. We lock ourselves out. There's no door. We just do it based on our limiting beliefs. And if you try to enter 5D with greed, with jealousy with uh, um, all of these things that are so low vibrational you're keeping yourself out but it's still open for you it just has a different set of laws contained within it and then you have 3d which is the hell that demons which are really just old beliefs that have been imprinted on earth's body or her older body and as star sees as, as grid workers as healers we're clearing all of those old imprints. We're clearing them. We're assisting with the ascension of the planetary body. But from one perspective, she's already ascended. She's waiting for all of us. <laughs> from another perspective, she's ascending in tandem with us. From a different perspective, she hasn't ascended, but that's more of a 3D presentation. She hasn't ascended and she's going to be ascending and she's awake. But she's already, we have to look at all of these. 5D is here. You have access to multi-dimensional, multi-locational consciousness now. There are people who are functioning within a fifth dimensional mindset. They're all around you. You may not be able to see them if you're operating at a, at a different layer, a third dimensional layer. You may not be able to see them. It's kind of like when you have a uh, when you buy a new Jeep and then you see all the Jeeps. Wow, I didn't, I didn't realize so many people had Jeeps. 
That's because your consciousness has shifted. You see things that you couldn't see before. When you start giving, when you're generous, when you support people, you open yourself up to what already was. But you couldn't see that there was a network, a crystalline network of other people like you who were willing to support you on your journey until you do so. So 5D is a matrix, it's a grid, but it holds higher consciousness, unity consciousness, love, support, all of these things. And then 3D is archaic. It's, it's an older system. So that was my dissertation. <laughs> I hope it helped you. And um, that's that. Thank you for subscribing. It really means a lot. Thank you for commenting. Everyone who found me through Higher Self's channel. And thank you to Higher Self for sharing my videos. I appreciate you. And um, welcome everyone who's new. And I love everyone who's with me on this journey. And I'm sending you infinite blessings peppered with some love and some light, and I will see you in another version of the now.